Oh, I want something here. Might be a good fish on my uh, new rod. Getting away from Cleveland, it is, uh, oh, where is it? Quarter to five in the afternoon. And this is going to be an overnighter. Fairly good day for it. I've just got to make it up to the anchorage before dark. Good day crew and welcome to another video. The plan was to anchor up at the top end of Morton just on the bay side of it but I did arrive early enough to justify poking my nose around to the north end and having a quick troll around the Copy Rock Reefs just north of Morton. It didn't get very long, maybe about 20 minutes out there and I had to turn around and come back and find an anchorage before it got too dark but it turned out to be worthwhile. Something on this one. Oh, decent size too. I'm going to have to back it off a bit. Of course, no net ready, but I'm still rigging rods. Not the time I wanted to hit a waypoint, I haven't even got my remote around my neck, which I usually have. I really, I really, I really need the net for that one. I'm gonna have to take a chance and see if I can get it without losing him. Oh, don't you get down with that engine? Oh. oh, another nice grassy. Ah, back in there, good on you. Oh. Yeah, might have been able to lift him, but wasn't sure. Right, how big are you? That is on 70. Whoops. Okay, you, you're not happy, I know that. Well, we're going to put you on 20 to 66 and a half, so that's 40, 46 and a half. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, I want to put them here. Might be a good fish on my uh, new rod. Keep an eye on where I'm going. Not terrific. Oh, what is this? Not a lot of fight in it. Oh, see some colour. What have we got? That's a keeper. That warrants a net. Haha, <laughs> well that's a good one. A good first good fish for my new rod. out of that. Now let's get this out of view. Right. Now how big are you? Fifty one. Fifty one, that's all right. I'll pay that. Get you dead and wet. I don't know one of these, I forgot about. These climbing things they are. I've been doing this for about five years now, the YouTube videos that is, and during that time I'm not sure that I've had one single fully successful trip as far as the camera work goes. In fact, I'm pretty sure I haven't, but this time I really excelled myself. First of all, the recorder that records the Peruno screen didn't work. Then I had numerous camera issues during the whole trip, and to top it off, on the last day, I forgot to turn on the PVG recording for my trolling around Hutchinson's Reef. And to my mind, that was the worst sin of all. In any event, I did get a little bit of video, as you've just seen. But for the remainder of the video, I'm just going to talk about the Time Zero screen and what you can see on it. Well, how good it is, really, for finding fish. And while it's playing now, I'll just point out another mistake I made while I was on this trip. And that is that I had a plan when I went out, but I wasn't flexible about it. I went out there with the intention of getting my revenge on the wahoo that were biting me off the previous week. And I continued in that mindset even after I should have realised that there probably weren't any wahoo here this week. 
and I persevered longer, way longer than I should have. I should have switched to trolling for Snapper way before I did. As it was, I only had a couple of trolls up and down before I decided it was time to head home. So I should have been more flexible and more willing to change my target species way before I really did. I'll just start off by running through the screens that I have up on the Time Zero unit. And this first one on the top left is a cross section of exactly what's under the boat. The beam width is 120 degrees and you can think of it as a cross section of the side vision or a sort of a very wide A-scope. It's showing me exactly what is under the transducer at any given time and it's showing me that under the boat to the left and to the right but without history you've got to have your eye on the sounder to see the fish come up this next one is another view of what's under the boat what's to the left and what's to the right but it has history so instead of looking at it in cross section we're looking at it in time of course the little panel on the left is the left hand view the center one is under the boat and the right hand one is on the right and they correspond to the left, centre and right beams that we looked at in the previous panel. So the main advantage of this is it shows the same thing but you get a little bit of history. So if you miss it on the first panel, you can see it in the history here. You can't keep your eye on the sounder all the time. Keep glancing at it but you've got to look around as well. This panel is your traditional side vision panel. So everyone will be familiar with that. I don't think there's any need for me to go through it in any great detail. The centre section, the black section, that is the water column under your boat. So anything that appears in that is under your boat in the water column. And then the sea floor starts in the blue shaded areas and anything over that will appear as a dot and it will be off to the sides. Side vision is a difficult concept. At some point in the future I might try and do a video on it uh, with some show and tell diagrams etc. Try and explain it a little bit better than I can in words. I know it took me a little while to come to terms with it when I first got a side vision unit. And finally, there's the 3D view. It's got the little boat icon in the top centre, and you get a 3D view of not only the ocean floor, but also where the fish are holding in the water column around you. And you've got the grid up there, showing distances to the side and depth in, I think it's five metre intervals. So you get a pretty good idea of just where the fish are in relation to the boat. Now of the four panels, I tend to look at the first one and the last one. So the pan shape of exactly what's under the boat at any given time and the 3D view gives me a sort of a better history of that. The other panels are there just for verification. All of the screens will show the structure on the bottom, but I do often find that the top left and the 3D view are the best for determining the structure on the bottom. The others show the variation, but they don't really show how it varies around the boat quite the same. I guess it's a matter of how everyone interprets what they see. Those two screens work best for me. Something different might be better for others. I think there's about two minutes of this video of the sounder screens left. So if you're interested in it, I'll just let it play with some background music for those two minutes and you can see what you think of the four displays and which ones you think are the most useful.
And that's a wrap for this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. Next week I'll put up a tips and tricks video. I'm not sure what, but I'll get something up that I hope you'll find interesting. Until when, good fishing.